Welcome to Mythical Kitchen, where dreams become food. Today we are making grilled cheese ramen, which is in the Will It Ramen episode of GMM. It is one of the single tastiest foods we have ever made on the show, and I'm gonna teach you, yes, you, how to make it. You teach a person to make ramen, they eat ramen for a day, but you watch this video, it's ramen time, baby. We've broken the recipe down into three easy steps, the time codes of which you can find right there. Let's get cooking. So we're gonna start by making our tomato ramen noodles that are gonna sit in our cheddar pork broth to get that little tomato soup action. To make ramen noodles, the key ingredient is this guy right here. <laughs> that almost splashed in my face. This is baking soda. The main ingredient, the only ingredient in it is called sodium bicarbonate. You can actually buy sodium bicarbonate specifically to make ramen noodles. That is going to give them their signature chew and it's what really differentiates them from pasta dough and I don't know how to get this box open, so I'm just gonna keep talking until I do. The thing about ramen noodles is that they have this really fantastic bouncy texture. So even when they're sitting in broth, how many layers are in this box? Pour a little bit of baking soda onto this. And put that in the oven and wait 10 minutes. We have normal all-purpose flour here. That is the basis of any noodle. And so we're gonna take our all-purpose flour and we're gonna add eight grams of this baking soda to it. So now we have salt. And then the things to add together other than that, water and tomato sauce. If you've ever made fresh pasta, you know a lot of people add eggs to it, but you can make delicious noodles with just straight up water and other liquids. And this is dehydrated tomato powder that's even gonna give it a more concentrated flavor. And so we're gonna make a little well of our dough, or dough as some pronounce it. And then we have just a bunch of red food dye. We're gonna stir all that together. We have just a beautiful violent red color forming. Make sure to just splash a lot of it all over your counter. We're looking a little bit wet, so I'm just gonna add more flour gradually to this, and then eventually I'm gonna turn it out on the table and start working it with my hands. You can see our dough is formed into a nice solid ball. And so you wanna clear up a space for you to, to work, and then you're just gonna start kneading it with your hands. You might be asking, Josh, are there any available ramen noodles on the market that I could use instead of making them from scratch? I never heard of it. No, if you wanna make this recipe, honestly, it'd be super delicious with just the broth and like instant noodles. Oh, you can get nong shim, you can get indomie, you can get maggi noodles, zatarain's rice. You just throw some Wonder Bread in that broth. You can do some like orzo pasta, you know, a bunch of Cheez-Its. You can do Cheez-Its instead of noodles. You know, you can do some. And this is looking good. It's looking a little plasticine right now, but we're gonna wrap this up in some plastic wrap and get it in the fridge. And all that dough is gonna hydrate and it is gonna look perfect and taste even more uh, perfect. -er. Welcome back to the Barefoot Contessa. Jeffrey's out getting me flowers, so I'm gonna roll out these ramen noodles. We're making a lovely lobster tarragon ramen noodle salad that's just perfect for summer in the Hamptons. When I think of the Hamptons and all my friends that come over, I just think, oh, <laughs> they love tarragon. We're gonna go ahead and take the ramen noodle dough and we're just gonna flatten out the disc a little bit and I'm gonna put a little bit of flour on there, really massage it in, and I'm gonna take a little bit of flour and I'm just gonna put it all over the machine. This is called a pasta roller, also known as my nemesis. We can cut to the clips of me failing at it. And now this goes through this one. Goes through this one. So let's try and do good today, huh? There we go, and that's rolling out nice. Look at that, we got a pasta dough. So we folded the dough over on itself and running it back through, that is going to create excess gluten development, which is really great because gluten means chew, right? That's the protein found in flour. And so now we're gonna set this to a little bit thinner and then gradually roll it out until it's thin enough to run through the actual ramen attachment, AKA the spaghetti attachment, but spaghetti is Italian for ramen. All right, now that's nice and thin. And you wanna kind of cradle it with your hands and not just dangle it. Now we got a long thin sheet. So you wanna keep your noodles real nice and long. So now we're just gonna run this through the noodle thing. You're gonna take out the widget and attach it to the didgeridoo. <laughs> More like didgeridon't. And then you see these nice, beautiful thin noodles coming out. That's looking fantastic. I'm gonna go fast, cause I'm bored. Yeah, look at that. It's like the Play-Doh factory, except real food. And then you got a nice, chewy bed of noodles. So we're gonna take this as a nice noodle nest, and we're just gonna toss that in our flour to make sure they're broken up and they don't stick when you boil them. And this looks like one good portion for ramen. We have all of our beautiful tomato ramen noodles, and now we gotta get to making our broth. What we're trying to do is kind of fuse the idea of a grilled cheese. You get all that like melty American cheese in there with a pork tonkotsu broth. So the cheese is actually gonna add a lot of fat that you would normally get from pork bones, but we are not using <laughs> any of those bones today. All we're gonna do is take an equal mixture of water and milk. You could do pork stock and milk, but what we have instead of pork stock is a little pork bouillon cube. If you ever want a flavor punch to the face, just start popping these back at snacks. 
They're great. Bouillon is literally just reduced stock that they have essentially dehydrated until I just threw the wrapper on the ground. That's so sad that that's just a natural. I don't know, I don't stand for littering. I'm gonna put this in my pocket. We got the pork stock and the water and milk in there. And then I'm gonna start winging in slices of American cheese. The reason you wanna use slices of American cheese is because they're just so floppy and fun. You can just kinda like. <laughs> when this melts, when you add all the other cheese, it's really gonna help that all bind together. And we're gonna get this beautiful consistency that is almost mimicking the fattiness of a pork ramen broth, except with all the flavor of American cheese. To be clear, I cannot teach you how to make authentic Japanese ramen, but this is a great way to kind of like infuse a fun little American classic with uh, Japanese food that has like a thousand years of history behind it. So the milk is starting to come to a boil. Now the key is you gotta get the biggest whisk in the world that's used for making like a giant vat of chili for an entire uh, Navy battleship. All right, so all that American cheese has melted into the milk. So we're gonna take Monterey Jack cheese, and we're gonna add that in there, and then we're also gonna take some cheddar. Monterey Jack is kind of a way to bridge the gap between American cheese and cheddar because it's got a real nice mild flavor, but it also melts really, really well. Now, to get the violent orange hue that we're looking for, we're gonna take some of this just uh, day glow powder that looks radioactive. This is actually dehydrated cheddar cheese. And fun fact, the term cheddar actually comes from the dye that is used to make cheddar. We're getting this beautiful kind of like milky broth consistency similar to tonkotsu, but to add another couple elements, we're gonna take some MSG. MSG is just a really good and safe flavor enhancer for foods. It's gonna give it a hefty seasoning of salt. You wanna be a little bit illiberal with that because we already got so much cheese in there. And ooh, it's starting to overflow. Oh no. That was the first time I successfully pulled a pot from overflowing on there. Now we don't have to stop down for 10 minutes to clean up. You're welcome, everybody. I am a hero. Indeed. Then we're gonna add a little white pepper in there just for some flavoring. And then one final thing, just to give this a little bit more body, we're gonna add in some heavy cream, which as I found out recently, is not just concentrated milk. This broth is looking nice and brothy and cheesy. Gonna go perfect with those tomato noodles. Yeah, look at that. It's not quite a cheese sauce because we have all that pork bouillon on there. God, that does smell really good. Let's give it a taste. Uh oh God, it's dripping into my hand, it burns. Oh God, ow. Mm. And now that is good to go. There is your cheddar pork broth. It's gonna go through tomato noodles. Now we are going to do our bread fried egg, which is really gonna tie all the elements of the grilled cheese. Oh, don't overflow now. All the elements of the grilled cheese and ramen together. Whisk faster. Mush, you idiot, mush. All right, we'll see you over at the next scene. Jeffrey never returned from the flower store, and I do suspect foul play. Before I exact my revenge, first we're gonna teach you how to make a lovely rose hip vinaigrette, perfect for summer. We're gonna make a bread fried egg. These here soft boiled eggs, it's really typical in ramen. All you gotta do is boil them for exactly six minutes, pull them out, and ice bathe them. I don't need to show you how to do that. What we're gonna do now with the soft boiled eggs, we're gonna take some Wonder Bread, and we're simply gonna roll it out to give it some more surface area. We're gonna try and use this as a protective coating, so we're gonna get that little bread chew when you're eating the egg in the soup, and then that is going to be crusted in panko, a little bit of batter. So what we gotta do is you gotta roll the egg up like a little dumpling. You can even wet your hands in a little bit of the batter, and then use the batter to seal the edges of that. You can just, you just take it and you're gonna submerge the whole thing in batter, and then you're gonna take it with the batter still nice and wet, and you're gonna drop that in the panko breadcrumbs and then fervently, must be fervent about it, try and cover that all with panko. And then now you want your oil to be pretty hot, about 375. We're gonna kind of use our hands to mash it and then you're gonna try and form it into like a perfect egg shape. And we're gonna just drop it in the oil very simply. And then you're gonna lovingly spoon oil over it. It's only gonna fry for about 30 seconds. Panko fries up very, very quickly and that's why we're using it in this recipe. You're gonna keep all the integrity of that egg, but it's just gonna be enough to cook the batter, get the panko nice and crispy, but leave the yolk Nice and runny. Now the egg is perfectly golden brown and crispy, and we are just gonna let that rest right on the cutting board, then we're gonna slice that open, and now we have to plate up our soup with a couple more fun surprises. I hope Jeffrey's not dead. That only makes sense if it stays in the edit. I think the whole bit's gonna get cut. I, now I really hope we keep the part of me talking about the bit that's gonna get cut that was cut, so then you're just gonna be like, what did Josh do? Who's dead? What, what's Jeffrey? Who's Jeffrey? Let's make some soup, huh? We're gonna go ahead and drop these ramen noodles in the water. We're just gonna boil them for a couple minutes and we wanna make sure they are staying separate. And then we're gonna start playing with our accoutrements. So I'm gonna take that egg and I'm gonna slice it in half. Hopefully it looks good. Look at that, the yolk is nice and fudgy. You can see it kind of spilling out. We got a lovely layer of bread on the outside. I wish I would have wrapped American cheese around it. Hindsight, 
is 2020, not this 2020, am I right? This year sucks, dude. Oh, we're making the best of it, you know, we're here. So this is a chashu pork grilled cheese. I didn't teach you how to make it, uh, figure it out. No, we've simply taken a pork chop. We're actually using a lean pork. Chashu is typically made with pork belly. I'm gonna drain these noodles, give me a sec. All right, we got our noodles. Look at those, this is red, that's crazy. We have our grilled cheese here. This is simply chashu pork. We actually got it from a local ramen spot. So all we're gonna do is slice this into nice little batons that we're gonna put directly into our soup, the way you might get sliced pork belly, actual chashu pork, and a bowl of tonkotsu ramen. So we're gonna take our noodles and we're just gonna put those in the bottom. Those are a lovely color. And then we're gonna start ladling the hot broth over it, and then the noodles are actually gonna start to absorb the broth. Look at that, have you ever seen such a violent color shift in a bowl of ramen? I hope not. That is fantastic. There we go. And now we're gonna nestle that egg right in the broth. We want the outside coating to slightly absorb it. We're gonna take some of our grilled cheese slices and we're just gonna put those right atop. And there is your beautiful grilled cheese, pork, tonkotsu, ramen with a bread fried egg and chashu pork grilled cheese. Less than three steps, you have a beautiful bowl of food. I can't wait to dig into this. We have the finished bowl of grilled cheese ramen here. That is looking incredible. I'm just gonna give the noodles a little jimmy. Mm, wait, one more. I want the egg. There's honestly a massive, massive flavor bomb. Kind of looks like nacho cheese, but it eats like a broth. You get all that pork flavor. The egg with the bread around it just gives you like extra carbs to soak up all that delicious broth. That is absolutely fantastic, but it's not my opinion that matters, it's the opinion of my colleague, Ryan. His opinion is the only one I care about. I've just been trying to get him to say I'm proud of you for the last nine months. So, I'm gonna spork him, but since we're maintaining social distance, we have the signature mythical kitchen spork extender now with additional extension properties. So Ryan, you go ahead and come come on the camera. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and chopstick you up a bite. Okay. Airplane's coming so in the you hangar. You tell me when you're, you're ready. Right. The noodles are swinging. I'm going. I'm gonna, wait, do you want me to push forward? Don't, Don't push, push forward. forward. Just come, I'm gonna okay. hold it here. I'm, go, I'm going. I'm going. I'm sorry. I, sorry, I don't, I don't know. was it? Wait, get the noodles. Serve the noodles. I'll lift it up. You get under it. There it is, like a dog licking a dripping ice cream cone. <laughs> What's the verdict? That was amazing. You got a little splash damage on your face. That's okay, I got the goggle. <laughs> It's really good. Super savory. Cheese sauce is, well, it's not really sauce. It's like a tenkatsu. It's a, it's a broth. It's a broth. What's your favorite thing about it? Watching you make it. Aw, thanks. And thank you all for watching me make it. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. Remember to hit us up on Instagram, my shoulders are tired, at Mythical Kitchen with hashtag dreams become food. We got new recipe videos every week. We got a new episode of A Hot Dog is a Sandwich, our podcast, every Wednesday, wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next time. Proud of you, Josh. Proud of you too, Ryan. And I'm proud of you. Rock it with a spork in your pocket. Get the spork tea now at mythical.com.